Hey guys, Wordy Nerd here, back with another video. I hope you're as excited for the FLL season as I am, because the challenge release is today, August 4th, and I hope you guys will enjoy this video as much as you do your season, even with the current global state. I hope maybe some areas can at least get to enjoy in-person competitions, because that's where the real fun and excitement is. But no one will complain with virtual, I hope, as long as we still have an FLL season. So, without further ado, let's get started talking about our base robot for this year of FLL Replay. Disclaimer, this robot is not perfect, and I know there are many other designs, but I think this is a great design for FLL Replay. Feel free to make your own base robot and inspire it off of this robot. But just a quick disclaimer, this robot is not perfect. So, a little while back, I decided to make a video called How to Make an Amazing FLO Robot, which was showing off Pluto 2.0, our intended robot for this year's FLO replay season. But after I thought about it, there are many changes that I wanted to modify. One thing you might note is showing a picture here. This version of Pluto, Pluto 3.0, is much smaller and is more compact. The gyro sensor is located in a better shape. And taking a look underneath, you can see that I think everything is better, more well placed. It is still extremely easy to take out the batteries and the medium motor is nestled in a good place instead of like last time. And I also don't have the big truck flip attachment like I did last time, which saves me a ton of room. Underneath again, we have our smaller wheels, which have a little dust on them. And then we have my caster wheel here with our color sensor here in a nice compact place. So let's get to the features of this robot. An important thing to note with FLO robots is of course the caster wheel. Like I talked about in another video, the best caster wheel for your FLO robot. Personally, I like the caster ball best. So I decided to use that. Especially with no obstacle mission this year, this caster ball would be very useful. These two wheels are small wheels. And as I talked about in my best wheels for your FLO robot video, I tend to like small wheels over big wheels because they allow for more preciseness. And with a board this small, it's really not like a forest in real life where you have to travel through it. With this, an FLO board is pretty small. So speed really isn't that necessary. It's more about the accuracy and getting to your missions, but it depends on your style. The other thing is this color sensor. This year, we intend to use more sensors in our robot missions. So I have this color sensor here, especially with this picture of FLL replay, in which you can see there are a lot of lines to follow and a lot of lines to square on. Another thing is the position of the wheels. Last time, my wheels were in the back, but this time, my wheels are in the front. Wheels in the front can help a lot with obstacle missions, and a front wheel drive is very important for a robot because a back wheel drive you won't likely be able to get up missions such as the bridge in FLL City Shaper, shown here. I have dog gears for attachments, like many FLL teams do. And if we take one last look underneath, you can see that my medium motors are placed in a way in which my wiring is very easy to get to. And so is mostly everything else, except for my gyro sensor here. But for that, I can just take off this base plate here. I decided to use this type of chassis for my FLL robot because these O-beams are extremely stable and it allows my robot to be very strong. One last thing to note about our robot is that unlike many ro base robots, our robot doesn't really have any special moving parts to it. Yes, it has your special attachments and it has all your good base features, but it doesn't really have anything special like many other teams, which have attachments sort of built into their robots. Our robot instead has two motors for purely attachments, because I believe attachments are important for FLL and all your videos should be stored there. As what, like I said in my things to prepare for your FLL season video. In that video, I said you could build a base robot before the challenge re is released, because before the challenge re is released, you don't really know what you're doing. But you can make a base robot with not too many variables, as long as it can climb over obstacles and run your attachments like normal, and it's compact and fits all your needs, it should be a good base robot. I like to keep all of my variables that complete the missions in the attachments and not in my base robot. That way I can prepare this base robot ahead of time for FLL. Overall, I think this robot to Pluto 3.0 is better than my Pluto 2.0 design. It's more compact, the sensors and wheels are in a better place, 
and battery changing might be even easier. The wires are very well exposed, so it's easy to make wire changes when you're changing the battery. I hope you, your team has a fun season during FLL Replay. In my next videos, it will be my City Shaper Mission Runs videos like I did last year for FLL City Shaper. This year, I'll be doing them for Replay as well. So I hope you see those to get some inspiration on how to complete missions. And without further ado, this was the Wordy Nerd 48 channel. A shorter video today, but still signing off. Bye!